This is Nick Kinney at the Water Conservation Center north of Dumas, in the North Plains Groundwater Conservation District. It's another installment of a virtual field day, and it's the uh, time of the year when there really is a payoff for all the effort that was put in beforehand. It's harvest. Right now we're standing in the west pivot, on the west side of the west pivot, uh, right what's in the middle of a, a cover crop trial that Jordan Bell and her colleagues have conducted. Uh, but we can see behind me is we've got cotton that's that's open to various degrees. A couple things that I want to point out is what we're noticing during harvest. A week ago, standing in the same field, it looked like it was going to be a, a poor turn in terms of how much cotton was actually open in the bowl, uh, how much we were going to be able to extract. But as time has gone by, the cold weather has not been so much of a detriment. We've seen some of these smaller uh, bowls begin to open full, so we're going to take a look here. Start to see some of these bowls that are now completely open. This will be uh, almost 100% harvested throughout. Even some of these other smaller ones. But what's even more telling is as we go through, a lot of these even very small, ball, small bowls that we've completely discounted are cracked and opening. Now, a week ago, this wasn't happening. This certainly isn't going to contribute much to yield. Um, it's not going to be harvested 100% either, but there will be the option if the stripper goes through to crack open, pull a couple of these out of the lock and contribute a little bit to the lint. Um, a couple of points that I, I want to make while we're looking at it that's a concern. Obviously, these immature bowls, you get a little bit of staining. That's going to be some docking. Uh, if you look at this compared to a mature bowl versus an immature bowl, you can see that one is certainly more desirable. This is one of the reasons on these fields. Uh, this particular field, it, we were very careful with the water. This year we didn't turn the water on and, and let it run and put an inch and a half on a week like capacity may have permitted. Um, this field got irrigated to the tune of about five inches across the season with some timely rains and some stored soil water. Um, I wouldn't have liked to have had any more water, especially late in the season, because I want to see a predominance of cotton that's going to be full and fluffy and, and uh, exposed out of the lock. Overall, some things that we've observed is the areas that have cover crops. And this is certainly not my story to tell, so look for more coming from Jordan uh, and, and her staff. But it looks like the cover crop areas show a couple of things. One is the cotton is certainly more dense, so it weathered the early storms in the season better. The second is the maturity is much better. Uh, when we went through with the stripper, you can look at the bowls are open to a much larger degree. Um, you don't see these partially open bowls as much. These were open all of the way. I think that was led by a couple things throughout the entire season on the cover crop. It appeared to me that it was a week or two ahead of the areas that didn't have cover crop. Everything from germination uh, to the uh, pithead square position to our first flowers, etc. Each stage throughout the dense cover crops, especially the wheat, looked to be ahead of schedule. Anyway, that's what we're looking at here in the cotton harvest. Uh, the summary from what we've harvested thus far, we're in the two to two and a half bale per acre range, which is respectable given this season, given what we were working on. Some of our population studies to come, hopefully we can report back on those yields, but those are gonna push towards two and a half to three bales, it looks like. Anyway, uh, that's what we're seeing here at the Water Conservation Center.